Where am I they? Look at me and then say day 47 Peru. Day 47 Peru. We arrived at the airport in Cartagena and the flight had been cancelled. Luckily we were right at the front of the queue and were able to get rerouted on a new flight but this meant a stop off at Bogota, the capital of Colombia. We made a new friend and we got to see her again later as you'll find out. Wide awake the next day, we decided to get out and explore Lima. The first stop was to go straight towards the coast. The coast was beautiful, but it was particularly beautiful because of Parc de la Moire, the park of love, with the lovely mosaic tiles around the edge for seating and the beautiful statue of the rather amorous couple in the middle. Uh, there was lots for us to see as soon as we arrived. Naturally, we found chocolate pancakes, so the kids wanted to stop off for one of those. We found our first play area for the kids. The first one we've seen in a long time, possibly since Central Park in New York. The kids were super excited. There were slides, there were swings, and there were other children running around to have fun with. There was a stall for painting. We'd not seen this before. This is not a thing that happens in the UK. So to be able to sit and paint in the park was quite a treat. The painting cost about a pound per kid, and it wasn't long before they were painting all over their favorite characters. Emily loved this, and we did this a couple of times on our stay. The park is also famous for the cats that roam around, there's lots of cats everywhere and they're looked after by the locals. We had good fun trying to count in Spanish how many cats we could find on our walks. A must-see when visiting Lima is Parque de la Reserva. This famous park has some of the biggest water fountains in the whole of Peru. Actually, possibly even the whole of the world. With over 12 different water fountains to see and interact with, we felt that it was definitely a must for our family. Not only that, but at night, they put on a light show. This seems somewhat spoiled by the Disney events of earlier in the year, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. The kids particularly enjoyed running through a tunnel of water and watching the big waterfalls squirt their water up as high as they could go. We also stopped for coffee and a churro. This made Emily go a little bit hyper in the park and she ran around for ages.
couple of times on the trip, we ended up walking along the coast. Walking from Barranco back to Miraflores, uh, we got to see quite a lot. La Comar is a shopping centre that's built into the cliff in Miraflores. It's a beautiful shopping centre with lots of familiar shops and lots of food and drink. There's also a park on the cliff top that the kids enjoyed as well, but it was pretty hot there because it's right under the glare of the sun. There's great views of the, of the Pacific Ocean and we couldn't walk along the coast without walking down the cliff and dipping our toes. And that's exactly what we did. You can also get surfing lessons there, although I didn't fancy putting on a wetsuit on the beach in front of everybody. things about Peru was the food. The food was amazing, there was so much choice. He also enjoyed La Lucha, which is a sandwich bar where you can get hot meat sandwiches. It's quite famous again in Peru, so he enjoyed a couple of these during our stay. Manolo's is a bit famous in Lima because of their chocolate calante or hot chocolate and churros that you can get. For 16 soles or about four pounds, you get six plain churros and a cup of hot chocolate that looks super thick. The kids enjoy dipping their churros into the hot chocolate. There were lots of food stalls in Lima, particularly in Park Kennedy. Dan made it his mission to try them all. His favourites turned out to be arroz con leche or creamed rice. The kids wanted to pop into the chocolate museum while we were there. We visited one of these in Cartagena, so they knew that there would be lots of treats available. This one was no different. We sampled as many things as possible. I sampled the pisco, which was passion fruit flavored, and it nearly blew my head off. I hadn't had alcohol in a while. We stumbled across Mercado San Martin, a little gem of a food court. We visited twice in two days just because there was so much food that we wanted to try and we weren't disappointed. Luckily they also sold pesto pasta so the kids were happy too.
first stay in Peru, we wanted to get a bus ride out of the capital city. Our first bus took us to Paracas, a seaside town south of Lima. There is a boat ride you can take where you can see penguins and sea lions, so naturally we booked this too. The boat trip did not disappoint. We managed to tick a few things off Emily's bucket list, which included a speedboat ride and seeing penguins. The penguins were walking along the cliff top as we arrived at the Ballastas Islands. As the boat travelled round the islands, we saw lots and lots of sea lions, which was a real treat. A few baby ones lying precariously on rocks too. After a night stay in Paracas, we hopped on another bus just a short way to a place called Huacachina. Huacachina is a desert oasis. Before arriving in Peru, I hadn't really considered that there might be desert there, but the Peruvian desert is quite a sight. Huacachina is super interesting too. A little body of water surrounded by palm trees and a whole load of hostels. We spent a night there and the following morning we decided to climb up the top of one of the sand dunes. Dan carried Alice and Emily walked halfway up herself. We were super proud of her. Dan and I then took it in turns to look after the kids as we both climbed to the top. The views from the top were spectacular and we were so happy that we'd made the trip.
After our excursion to Padacas and Wakatina, we went back to Lima. This gave us some more time to exp- explore some of our favourites like Park Kennedy and all the food. We also wanted to check out the markets. The markets that the locals use are busy, bustling, hot and sweaty places, but full of interest in sights. from the fruit and vegetables are pleasing to the eye. One of our favourite places was the Inca market where you could get lots of alpaca wool and touristy treasures. Naturally we stocked up and we now have a bag full of these to take home. We really enjoyed our time in Peru and we'd love to go back and explore some of the other treasures that the country holds. But for now we'll just have to keep wearing our alpaca wool jumpers and our pashmina scarves and remembering the good times. Thank you for the shoes, because I think my sister was.